We have had a really big week with cruise news here, especially focusing on Princess Cruise Lines, everything going on. So I've got a roundup of a few stories that I think are really important for you to know about if you enjoy cruising or even thinking about cruising. Also, we've got some price increases that sound like they're on their way, a big sale that you shouldn't miss if you're going to go on Princess, and a lot of other things that I think are gonna be really helpful to you. So let's go ahead and get started. Hi there, this is Allison with Let's Go Travel Tips. Today is Saturday, it is January 27th of 2024, and if you have not subscribed to our channel yet, will you please go ahead and hit that subscribe button? We'd love to have you with us. We are this close to having 22,000 subscribers, and we would like you to be part of the conversation around here. Also, if you appreciate my updates, would you please give this video a thumbs up? That helps us out as well, so thank you. Now let's start at the top. Uh, we've had a lot of news this week about the cancellation of the Sun Princess inaugural cruise. We have had such a range of emotions to do with that, everything. People, have, you all have shared so much in our comments for our videos and our Facebook group. And then we, Gordon and I, have read a lot of comments on a lot of other Facebook groups and forums. So uh, some people don't want to cruise with Princess again, and some people are going to cruise with Princess, but they like to sail with other cruise lines. So I want to give you a heads up here about a couple of things. First of all, um, Viking has released some of their new cruises for 2026. Apparently, booking with Viking is strong enough that they're just announcing um, an early opening of a lot of their t earlier 2026 sailings. So a couple of them that really stand out to me. Um, they've got a Viking Homeland Voyage. It's going to be sailing from Stockholm to Bergen. And the cool thing about that is you get overnight in three of those amazing um, Scandinavian Scandinavian cities. There is Stockholm, Oslo, Norway, and Bergen, Norway. You get an overnight in all three of those. That's a big deal. They've got an eight night. They're calling it their iconic Mediterranean sailing that goes from Barcelona to Rome. And those have overnights in Barcelona and Tuscany. Overnights in cruise ports are a really big deal. They've got a 10 day empires of the Mediterranean um, journey. I really like that one. It goes from Venice to um, Venice to Athens, get my direction right there. They are going to nine destinations. They um, go to some of the places that we don't often, well, we see them on a lot of cruise itineraries, but not often on the same uh, cruise itinerary. They've got a 15-day British um, Isles Explorer that goes from Bergen to London, and that one you get to have overnights in Bergen, in Bergen, Norway, and in Greenwich, England. And then the other one that I really liked, if you're thinking of the Caribbean with um, going on Viking, they've got an 11-day West Indies Explorer journey, and that one um, sails round trip from San Juan, Puerto Rico. And I looked at airfare, and airfare from a lot of places is actually affordable to San Juan, Puerto Rico. I don't know if it happened to be just when I was looking, but that's amazing that you can do that. Um, and then another really cool thing that Viking has really stepped up their game with is they are adding a lot more um, land tours on either end that you can even on some of their cruises, you can book the pre-cruise um, extension as well as a post-cruise extension. We're used to seeing that a lot on um, like river cruises, but Viking is starting to add it on some of their ocean cruises. So that is a really big deal as well. If you're going to um, go to the expense and spend your time to get to some of these locations, you can also do um, that in a lot of the bigger cities. So that's really exciting. So put that in the back of your mind if you're thinking about going. If you need help booking those, let me know. I am delighted to help with that. Now, um, a lot of, um, I still get a lot of emails. It's surprising to me about Princess Promotions. I just kind of file them and keep them in the back of my mind. And then someone made a comment on a video the other day, so I thought it would be worthwhile to bring it up again. I've had several videos that I've done talking about Princess Promotions, so I will have Gordon link those underneath this video. Like when you're looking at it, just click on the show more under the video and it will drop down a box. So, or else you can search Let's Go Travel Tips Princess Promotions and that will hopefully catch a bunch of them. But Princess Promotions is um, a program that Princess is doing with a third party um, provider there that you can buy. They've got these different packages. They cost different amounts, but in essence, you are buying 
future cruise credits and your buying hotel stays. And um, there's flexibility with when you're going to stay. Um, not quite really pay attention to the package you buy if you think you're going to do this. I've had some people tell me that it has worked great for them. I've got a lot of people who have told me that they have bought it and then they can't book hotels in the places that they expected to be able to book them. And also, a couple, so here's a couple of other notes for you to think about. Just really quick reminders about that if you're going to do it. When you buy those packages, they do have an expiration date. You have to use your hotel stays within a certain amount of time, and you need to use your future cruise credits within a certain amount of time. So keep that in mind as you book it. If you book a cruise and you um, apply those future cruise credits to it, and for any reason you have to cancel that cruise, you don't get the money back. The future cruise credits actually go back in that package. They don't just go back to your princess account like you're used to having. They go back in that package, and they are associated with the expiration date that goes with that package. Okay, so keep that in mind. And and then um, the other thing is, is if you don't know right off what you're going to book with it and that you're going to go, that is another reason that I would probably not book it because if you hit that expiration date and you haven't booked your... Um, and you haven't you know used your hotel stays or you haven't used your uh, future cruise credits then you just lose that many and um, future cruise credits i've said this before future cruise credits um, have been a thing for quite some time now but they became a really big player during covid when cruise lines had to cancel cruises due to covid and then you ended up with these future cruise credits that um, so this moving forward is just kind of taking something that they had to do an awful lot of during the pandemic and turning it into to like an investment ins instrument, which I don't really think it's an investment instrument in real life. So I'm not telling you that you should buy them. I'm not telling you that you shouldn't buy it. I am telling you that if you buy it, make sure that you know what you are buying. Okay, that's just my note to you about that. Um, there you go. So if you've got questions about it, tuck it down below. I know that we've got Let's Go family members who would buy them again, and we have Let's Go family members who would never buy them again. So I love that you all are happy to jump in and answer questions or share your experiences. So please do, if you have bought those and you're pleased, if you're not, you know, um, or answer questions if somebody asks um, particularly about it and you happen to know. So I wanted to let you know. Now, okay, so we'll start with the good news. So with Princess, um, right now through Sunday night is when they have the clock ticking right now on their website, you can get an up to a 20% discount on your excursions to Alaska. I've looked at our other cruises and it doesn't apply to that. Um, just to Alaska. Now, recently we just talked about the prices jumping for excursions, and indeed they have. They have really gone up. So we were comparing how much we paid for the Alaska excursions we had already booked for our cruise. At, our group cruise is going July 27th. Um, it's on the Discovery Princess. If you'd like to come, we would love to have you come. Just send me an email. But anyway, we had booked those some of our excursions already, and the price is up. So even with the sale price, the price is more than we had paid for it. But if you haven't booked your excursions um, on Princess to Alaska and you've got a cruise booked to Alaska, now is a good time to buy those excursions to save the money, all right? Um, so I wanted to let you know about that. Um, the other day, I let you know that some food costs were going up associated with the wedding packages and other things. So, um, by the way, sounds like um, specialty dining is going to go up in not too long. That is what I've been told. Um, I haven't been told that by a person at Princess, but I why am I letting you know then? Because if you know that you want to book some specialty dining and you've got a cruise and you can actually make reservations in the app, you might want to go ahead and do that just to save a little bit of money. Um, if they don't go up for a while, um, don't uh, get mad at me, but that's what I have been told. So just wanted to let you know that prices are likely to go up. And you know what? When you look at how much specialty dining costs on Princess, and then if they're going to increase the prices more, um, I would say step back, look how much specialty dining costs on um, Norwegian, how much it costs on Celebrity, how much it costs on Carnival. And um, I don't think, um, as much as I hate to see prices go up, we are not, um, Princess is not outpacing. 
we are not seeing the changes that outpace the other cruise lines. Just throwing that out there. I never like a price increase. I want to make that clear. I just try to look at everything across the board and see where um, everything stands compared. Um, you know, I like to compare other cruise lines to each other as far as that pricing goes. Now, and another thing I would say is let, while we're talking about um, uh, price increases, spa prices are also up. So um, we had a Let's Go family member who um, commented about that. And when she said that, I looked and sure enough, I am used to buying hair services on a cruise ship and they are more than they were when I went in October. So it's, I think it's pretty much across the board that everything is going up. Now, here are some things that I want you to think about when you are dining on a cruise ship. We have a Let's Go family member that just got back off the Crown Princess and we've got two interesting stories um, from that sailing from them. So first of all, um, just like a little tidbit of something interesting that happened, they actually had to turn around and go back to the port in Hilo, Hawaii because someone on the ship got, was arrested. There were rumors flying around the ship about maybe what that person did to be arrested. So since we don't really know, um, I won't say, but they actually, um, they saw the law enforcement um, people arrive by tender and then they saw the person be taken off in handcuffs. So that's a kind of a new um, thing happening. We're more used to having uh, medical evacuations, but um, just know that um, sometimes that happens. And if you think you're going to do something wrong, um, they're they're not going to be treating you any easier because you're on a cruise ship. So wanted to throw that out there. I know that you all aren't going to do that. But the other thing really stood out to me, and this experience I have had before, not with any of our Let's Go family members, but often Gordon and I, when we are by ourselves, if we're not on a group cruise, we, we eat dinner by ourselves nine times out of ten. And it used to be um, when we first started cruising and then um, other times we would go ahead and share a table because it's nice to get to know other people and say hi and hear where they're from and everything about that. But this Let's Go family member shared this experience, and I want to hear what you all, if you have had this as well, and what you think about it. So they were sharing a table um, several nights with people, and then they finally got to the point that they were no longer doing that. They went back to just dining alone. And the reason is, is that the tables that they were sitting at, they had people voice such strong opinions about politics and about wearing a mask that they just didn't want to be on the receiving end of it anymore and have to listen to it. And I I understand that. So in polite company, um, it has always been the rule that you don't discuss politics or religion. And I would say that ever since COVID has happened, don't discuss that either because people are so passionate and have such strong feelings about um COVID, about the vaccines, about wearing a mask, that it would just be out of line to discuss that at the dinner table because you would never, whether your opinion is the same as someone else's, number one, you don't know that, and number two, you would never want to offend anyone or make anyone um, not really want to be sitting there and having dinner with you. So I wanted to put that out there um, just as a thing for us to all think about, but also um, if you think of anything else that it would not be appropriate um, that you shouldn't bring up because people have such strong opinions about. Um, but anyway, that just really struck me and it made me a little bit sad that people forgot that we're supposed to sit down to dinner and have a nice time together and really respect everyone that we're eating with. So just putting that out there, tell me what you think in the comments. Um, like I said, this is really good for us to discuss together. Another thing I'm going to say about dining is um, I constantly hear from people that aren't crazy about the food on Princess, so they want to try somebody else, or they're not crazy about the food on Norwegian, so they want to try another cruise line. They're not crazy about the food on Royal Caribbean, so they're going to try another cruise line. I'm going to put something out here, and I want to hear your opinion on it. With my experience, um, in the last um, just over a year, we have been on Princess, as you know, several times, but also um, on Celebrity. We have been on Norwegian. We have been on Royal Caribbean. And, and I would submit, uh, as a general rule, it's pretty the same across the board. Um, overall, you know, some of them have better buffets than others, I would say. But overall, truly, it's pretty similar food you're going to get. So I would say that if you're choosing between the large cruise lines, you might want to consider cruising for something else other than looking at the food. And if you really don't like the food on one cruise line, of course, go try another one. But it can also change a lot between cruises. It can vary between ships. And so if you are so 
someone that is a foodie and you are not enjoying your um, food, you might want to look more to your Oceania. Oceania likes to say they have the best food at sea. I hear that's a little bit subjective, but also there are, uh, you, you know, you've got your Regent Seven Seas. These are in a whole different price bracket, but I think that that is where you're going to have to go if you want exceptional cuisine all the time. So tell me what you all think about that. Um, just this when I was on Carnival in November, I actually thought their food was really good, but it wasn't better than the food that I had on Princess in October. And so, um, and the same with when I was on um, Celebrity. It's been a year since I was on Celebrity, but their food was no more remarkable than Princess's is. So share in the comments what you all have experienced lately on different ships and kind of what you think about it. And food is terribly subjective. So we talk about that a lot. Now, a quick note that I wanted to bring um, you all up to date on is um, what do you do with your um, currency when you're going to cruise? I get a lot of emails about that, so I thought maybe we could talk about it here for a minute and you could share how you do things in the comments. So first of all, when you go on a cruise, you need to take some cash with you. Um, if you are brand new to cruising, when you get on the ship, that whole experience there is cashless. You put your credit card um, on your account and at the end of the cruise, your charges are settled to it. But if you don't use a credit card, you can add your bank account to it. Um, your debit card, you know, to do that. But um, be aware, um, towards the end of the cruise, you might get charges that go against your bank account and then they come back again as they settle everything. With that knowledge, when you have charges that go against your bank account, you can't complain to anybody about them. If the if you get a charge on there that you don't think that you should have gotten, the um, you can call the cruise ship and tell them, but you don't have the intermediary of a credit card company to um, say, you know what, I don't think I should have been charged for that and then the credit card company will launch um, the investigation of, of that for you. So keep that in mind as you link your bank account to a cruise ship, okay? Remember that. Another really important thing to know is how you're gonna use cash while you're on your trip. You always need to have some cash. Um, if you're gonna tip anyone extra, you need cash to do it. But also when you get off the ship in different ports, you're going to need cash. Um, not everywhere takes a credit card still. A lot of places do, but you're going to come across vendors and eating locations that don't. Um, sometimes you might want to just take a quick taxi somewhere and it's just easier to pay with cash. Um, all of those things you're going to wish you had cash. Now when you travel abroad, you're going to need currency often for the places that you're going. Um, for example, uh, when you go to Europe, you're going to want to have those euros. And often people ask, how many euros do you get to take with you? And so that's going to depend a lot on your spending habits. So you would probably need to decide that for you. But when we go to Europe, I never take less than 500 euros with me and sometimes more depending on where we're going and how long we're going to stay. But I also know that if I am abroad and I want to get some more um, currency, I just go to an ATM and do that. So here are a couple of notes about ATMs. First of all, not all cards work in every um, ATM. If you are in our Facebook group, you will notice that our Let's Go family member who is just on the Sky Princess had um, the unfortunate um, <laughs> opportunity to be behind someone in line who is yelling at guest services because their debit card did not work on the Princess ATM. Now, um, be aware that your debit card is maybe not going to work at every ATM in the world. So have other plans and be aware of that. We have used um, our debit card with um, Princess ATM ATMs many times and it's worked just fine. But keep in mind that you're going to maybe have to try different ATMs in places. And so that might impact number one, your choice of how much money to bring with you, how much cash to bring, or the knowledge that maybe when you get off in port, you're going to have to go to another ATM. So just keep that in mind. And then also when you are on um, going abroad, make sure that you tell your bank where you're going. Every time we go abroad, I um, let them know which which countries we're going to go to so that when they see my card go to an ATM there they know that it's okay otherwise a lot of plate banks will stop transactions be out of security and you're not going to be able to get the money that you want. So make sure that you notify them where you're going to go. The same thing goes with your credit card. Let the credit card company know. Now, a heads up, I have called American Express before to let them know that. And several times they have told me that I don't need to let them know. Um, they are... Um, 
I, I really appreciate that about the cards that we've got with American Express. And so I'm to the point now with American Express that I don't. But you know what? Our Visa cards, if I don't tell them, they're not going to let the transactions go through in those countries. And I understand that. And if you are someone that uses credit cards, know that um, it's getting much better with how many places will accept American Express abroad, but there are still a lot of places that don't. So make sure that you've got your Visa or a MasterCard to be able to do that. Discover is still not as widely accepted as Visa or MasterCard. Visa or MasterCard are the ones to have if you only want to have one card. But I'm going to tell you, if you only have one credit card, I would suggest getting a second one just for a backup in case as you're traveling, something um, is compromised with the one that you've got. Um, and you need to have a second one. If they have to turn off that first card, you're going to want to have a second one for your charges to roll to. Okay, so that is another thing. And always when you're looking at your credit cards, make sure if you can that you get one that doesn't charge you any like of those foreign transaction fees or any currency conversion fees. Uh, be really wise about that as well. So I was thinking that we could also have a discussion in the comments about how you travel with your cash, what you do. Um, there's all the things, you know, um, it's hard to think of every little thing, but you know, when you get on board the ship, we always put some of our currency in our safe and I don't take it all into every port with us. Um, I don't put all of our cash that we take. I don't put it all just in my purse. Gordon has some and I have some and I tuck some in other places in um, my carry-on and that so that everything is not all in the same place if something happens to one bag or one thing. So, you know, think about things like that if you're traveling somewhere and um, the many belts that you can wear under your clothes Clothing is, is very handy if you're taking a lot of money with you. And the other note that I would have for people that don't want to use a credit card, I would say get one just for travel. But if you really don't want to, make sure that you take a lot of money with you from the standpoint as if something unexpected happens and you need to buy a plane ticket somewhere to get home or just a lot of unexpected things that can come up. So make sure that you figure out a workaround for that if you don't want to have a credit card to pay for things. Um, a lot of times, like we have seen with insurance, you often have to pay for things yourself and then you're reimbursed by the insurance company. So all of that to me kind of plays in to making the choice of how you're going to travel and what credit card you're going to have and everything that goes into it. So I would love to hear from you all in the comments about that. And finally, here's a note. Um, when I got on the carnival celebration, as you go to embark on that ship, there's a drug sniffing dog that is right there, right when you come into the terminal to try to keep you from bringing anything on board that you're not supposed to bring. And they are checking for drugs. That is their main thing. And so I came across a story about um, some passengers that boarded the Norwegian Joy to sail to um, the United Kingdom kingdom from the United States and apparently it is a really big deal. People try to smuggle marijuana into the UK because they get a lot of money for it. So these passengers boarded and they had these vacuum sealed bags of marijuana in their luggage and I think they probably thought that because they were vacuum sealed they would be able to tuck them in their luggage and no one would know. But indeed the um, drug sniffing dogs did detect it. They tracked down these passengers on board and um, in they ended up um, having um, Homeland Security ended up boarding the ship. These people were arrested and now they face charges of trying to smuggle. So here's a few notes for you. Um, I think sometimes um, people think that smuggling on board a cruise ship is an easy way to go. And just heads up, that's that wouldn't be the way to go. But also, it's really important to note that the cruise lines do not want marijuana in any form on board their ships. They are not allowing it. It does not matter if you have one of those um, like marijuana, what do they call them, like a me medical marijuana card. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if um, the marijuana is in the form of like some other form other than just, you know, sealed as, as marijuana in a bag. It, like if it's something that you buy for medicinal purposes, you're not, you can't bring it on board the cruise ships. So think about that when you think about what you're going to take. Um, we saw the news story a few months ago where a lady boarded, she had um, the cannabis in the form that would be for her medical situation and she can't cruise on Carnival 
anymore. It is really serious to take that stuff on board. So I just wanted to put that out there and let you know because I know that there are people that use that for medical purposes, but you can't take it on a cruise ship. So if any of you have anything to add to that, I would really appreciate it. And I really appreciate you sticking with me. I know it's a longer video today, but we had a lot of things that we need to talk about. And next week is a new week and we've got lots of news to talk about there as well. I've got some more thoughts on what's going on with the Sun Princess. So I'm going to talk to you about that on Monday and see what you think. Alrighty. So I'll see you here again on Monday and I'll be talking to you all again really soon. You all take really good care. God bless you. Love you. Bye-bye.